If you know SpaceX very well, you'll understand that the Starship project has always been a consistent one amidst any launch failures. This means that the desired goal of launching the Starship to the moon and Mars will someday be an achievement. Though the last Starship launch ended in a blast, but that doesn't discourage the company to stop halfway on its ambition to create a human colony of over 1 million people on Mars. Hence, SpaceX has rolled out another prototype of the Starship which will continue from where SN24 and Booster 7 stopped. But the question is will this particular Starship be of another color? And what changes has been made in its design? Is there anything SpaceX has decided to do with the launch pad so as not to get it damaged again, just as it happened on the last launch? Let's iron out the necessary nuggets of all these questions in today's video. SpaceX seems to have another insight about the modeling of the newly introduced prototype. And exploring from the Raptor unit, SpaceX has considered doing more to cooling the 33 Raptor engines. These engines in question fire 16 million pounds of thrust at very high temperature, and since all Raptors are closer to each other, heat transfer in the Raptor unit is intensified. This is a whole lot of big deal to iron out. Also, a marvelous upgrade that SpaceX did on the Booster 7 was making the grid fin movable for easy positionings and orientation match as the booster submerges in between the arms of the chopsticks. Next is the hexagonal heat shell tiles. On previous static fire tests, SpaceX recorded a number of flying TPS tiles in the air, and of course, after the test some tiles were said to be missing, but observing from the last test flight, when the Starship finally cleared the pad, cameras around didn't capture capture any missing tiles on the body of Starship, all the tiles were intact, and that's a big win for the Starship upgrade. Before SpaceX will attempt to launch another massive Starship rocket into orbit, there needs to be necessary repair and renovation properly done on the badly damaged launch site in southern Texas. What isn't well understood is if SpaceX will give another modeling design to the base of the launch mount. Remember how the first Starship test flight on April 20th destroyed the structure below the launch pad, sending chunks of sand, concrete, and steel thousands of feet into the sky and setting fire to a nearby park. However, SpaceX wouldn't want such incident to repeat itself again. To ensure that each subsequent flight doesn't fling debris everywhere, the company is adding a new feature, a pair of massive steel plates with pressurized water to help dampen the effects of as many as 33 Raptor engines igniting simultaneously during takeoff. Elon Musk had described the shattering of the launch mount as Rock Tamadou, a two-word phrase to describe the damaging combination of power, head, and gas that left a gigantic crater giving a hard hit on some of the Raptor engines just a few minutes before liftoff. When it comes to fire diversion and dampening techniques, the gold standard in the rocket launch industry has been to build some kind of flame trench. The flame trench is a long, often V-shaped duct that helps redirect the massive energy and gas away from the launch pad and the rocket itself. Flame trench is mostly used in alongside with a water deluge system. It is a new innovative for practically any orbital rocket today, including rockets launched by SpaceX. George Sowers, a professor of mechanical engineering at the Colorado School of Mines who previously worked for Martin Marietta, and United Launch Alliance flattered the powerful damping mechanics and depressant of this technique. In his words, he said, It's sort of astonishing to me that they didn't use the practices that the launch industry has perfected for decades. Now, let's highlight some factors that can also cause damages to the Starship rocket during liftoff. Whenever a rocket is ignited and ready to lift off, scientists has accounted a number of factors that can damage the rocket and its surrounding area. The most obvious one is heat from the engines. Another is sound. The heightened acoustics of the engines, coupled with its thrust, produce a lot of energy. And a third, often overlooked, issue is fast-moving gas plumes generated by the engines. It is thousands and thousands of pounds per second impacting on that concrete, said Tori Bruno, CEO of ULA, and also SpaceX's competitors. Gases generated by the 33 Raptor 2 engines are likely to blame for the debris from the test launch, according to Sowers. The rocket took off from an elevated launch mount, a supersized milk stool, that stood over a round slab of concrete. When Musk was questioned why SpaceX didn't consider adding flame trench to the launch mount on Twitter, Elon Musk answered saying that SpaceX was confident the Starship will lift off above the launch pad and they intend to study the launch process or stages so as to improve on any fault that may likely arise during the next launch.
Now, the real plan for the launch mount consists of two steel plates, the top one full of holes that will allow cold water to shoot out during launch. This means that the launch mount will be fully constructed by steel plates. The idea here is that the steel will be able to withstand the intense forces and energy better than concrete. And steel plates will not fly around the environment in pieces, and with the help of pressurized water, the noise and thrust impact will be dampened. The type of steel we are talking about here is of massive super strong steel shower head pointing up. It's not as if the idea of this steel plate launch mount wasn't considered, but SpaceX couldn't finish working on it before the date of the launch, which is April 20th, and you can imagine how important this date is to Elon Musk. So, the launch date couldn't be postponed, since the steel plate structure was not ready in time. However, at the end of the day, SpaceX regretted launching the Starship without proper work done for a solid steel plate launch mount. That is why Elon Musk later admitted that, if we'd expected to dig a hole, we would not have launched, he said. According to an aerospace consultant and former manager of NASA's space shuttle program Wayne Hale, making a flame deflector out of steel and cooling it with water isn't unprecedented, he said. The geometry of it, exactly what it looks like, how big is it, how much water flow are they putting through it, those are all questions that need to be decided, he said. In Hale's unusual opinion, something needs to be down fast on the launch mount before another unpredicted test. He suggested that whatever SpaceX have got in mind to do, so long, they have decided to work with metals on the launch mount, they should test the strength of the steel using high temperature flames before considering another test flight. Starship is so powerful no doubt, that is why the heat transfer on the steel plate would be substantial, and the steel surface might try to melt away during a launch, another downside to using metals in the construction of the launch mount, but perhaps the water suppression will be an added advantage to the cooling of the pad. On the other hand, refurbishment on the plate will likely be necessary between flights, considering reusability of the Starship. But SpaceX hasn't neglected other launch pads like this. Take for instance the launch sites in the United States, such as SpaceX's own pads at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, use flame diverters, dealing with large cavernous hallways leading away from a rocket's underside to steer its tail of fiery forces in a controlled path aimed at minimizing damage. Without such a plan, debris from the concrete at the base of the mount will kick up during liftoff and of course strike the rocket itself and compromise a mission. Phil Metzger, a planetary scientist at the University of Central Florida who has studied the ground effects of rocket launches admitted that the stiffest impact in rocket launch is basically on the ground during launch and landings, he said on Twitter. Launch and landing pads are touchy. Any little thing that goes wrong can cause a zipper effect that creates a giant problem. The latest SpaceX failure shows a rocket development culture at the company that embraces fast-paced tests and perhaps takes an account of failures of prototypes that provide data to improve the vehicle's design. Lastly, SpaceX will have a huge nightmare to battle with, and that's the FAA. This organization responsible for regulates launch site safety and oversees technical investigations into commercial rocket mishaps is always watching every single step SpaceX makes that may hamper the environment, and if at all any changes will be done on the Starship, SpaceX will need to sign off on changes to Starship's launch pad infrastructure before its next launch attempt, said Tom Morata, who advises other space companies on launch regulations. Do you think steel will be better off in the construction of the launch mount than concrete? Keep an eye on SpaceX new Starship changes that will change everything. Just click on the video.